The other day we were discussing the subject of limbs of striving, which the yogis should possess. And uh, this expression, Ida Bekwe Beku Sadohoti. In this with this expression, Sierra has touched on the description of Beku in various ways. He has not yet touched on the first limb, namely Sada. So today he would like to discuss this one first. This uh, from this expression Sado Hodi, one must possess Sada, faith or confidence. And further description is uh, one must have faith in the Buddha's wisdom. Now this uh, Buddha's knowledge, which are the causes of his enlightenment. It is not easy for those who are not Buddhists to have faith and understanding of this cause of Buddha's enlightenment, this knowledge which is the cause of Buddha's enlightenment. Even those who are Buddhists from youth, born Buddhists, recited the qualities of the Buddha from their young days as taught by their parents and teachers, found it difficult to have real faith and confidence in the knowledge of the Buddha. If uh, one has not uh, learned the correct practice, of the way of mindfulness at Ipatana, by approaching the spiritual friend Kalyana Mehta in accordance with the Buddha's exposition both from the theoretical and practical aspects. Even if one has learned the correct practice, if one has not undertaken the practice. Even if one has undertaken the practice, if one has not reached the stage of satisfaction. Then it is not easy to accept, to come to an acceptance, confirmation and resolution of the correctness, validity of the Buddha's teachings. One can only accept, one can only, only come to an acceptance, confirmation, resolution with one's experiential knowledge. Then only genuine sadha will arise. However, one can awaken Sada to come to acceptance by discussion, through discussion, understanding the rationality of the Buddha Dharma. One can awaken the traditional faith and confidence, Sada. If, if one does not have faith in the Buddha's knowledge or in the Buddha's quality or if one has understood to some extent or not at all, then it will be necessary to awaken sadha, faith and confidence by describing the qualities of the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. And then about the karma and karma result that good because good, bad because bad. And the rationality of the Buddha Dharma, the cause and effect relationship. With that, sadha, faith and confidence can be awakened. In this, in this discourse on the Madani Yenga, limbs of striving, the Buddha has uh, described this uh, ETV uh, Bhagwa, that means uh, the recitation of the Buddha's quality, that, that in which one should have faith. This is the first, uh, the first of the faith that one should possess. Now it is, uh, it is necessary to have faith and confidence, sadha, in one's meditation teacher, the methods of practice, and also in oneself. Otherwise, 
one will not undertake the practice because faith motivates the practice. Just like uh, the analogy given here is uh, when you want to have treatment, uh, to take up treatment with the physician, if you have no faith in the physician, himself or herself, then you will have no faith in his or her treatment, nor his or her prescriptions. If you want your disease, sickness to be treated, then you should have faith in the physician and his or her treatment and medicines. You must accept, have faith and have a definite confirmation, resolution. So, it is necessary to have this uh, faith, acceptance and resolution in accordance with the prescriptions or instructions or guidance by the physician, take the medicines correctly and uh, you must faith that you must have faith that uh, the physician can treat you successfully. So also with sada in the practice. Only when you are certain of the teacher will you be able to undertake the practice with energy. So too, only when you accept the Buddha's quality and have faith in the Buddha will you be fulfilled with the first and foremost limb of striving. However, we are not uh, demanding or forcing you to have faith in the Buddha, nor in the quality of the Dhamma, nor any other thing. We only describe the rationality of the practice, cause and effect, and the results that you can get from the practice of the Dhamma in this way, awaken Sada. Then, this Sada which is awakened can be sustained with the practice of Satipatthana. If you are able to see the Dhamma, understand the Dhamma through the different stages, as much as you are able to comprehend this Dhamma, you will come to a decision that it is correct and valid gradually until you realize the genuine happiness. Then you will have unshakable faith. When uh, Sarah was young, as a young monk, when he studied uh, the Buddhist scriptures, uh, out of these uh, studies he remembered three things, and these three things are about the three Samvata fulfillments. These fulfillments are, first of all, A2 Samvata, the fulfillment of or accomplishment of the course. The secondly, Pala Samvata, the fulfillment or accomplishment of result. And the third one is Satupakara Samara, that is fulfillment of the assistance or, or the benefit, benefit uh, fulfillment of the benefit towards all beings, so that all beings will realize the benefit of these teachings. First of all, the Hetu Samara, the fulfillment of the course. Since the time of his uh, Buddha in the making, Orisata, throughout this uh, innumerable lifetimes, seeing the suffering of all beings, sub- being subject to existential suffering of old age, sickness and death, and he had this uh, Mahakaruna, great compassionate feeling, in order to save them, help them, to free them from this existential suffering. But this compassion is not enough. He must have the quality in order to save them. So, for many lifetimes, he fulfilled these causes known as this parami spiritual, spiritual, spiritual perfections in order to establish his great knowledge. Because compassion is not enough. So he has to build up this knowledge. This 
is known as Hetu Samara, fulfillment of the course. Based on this uh, Mahakaruna, great compassionate feeling, he had fulfilled throughout many eons the spiritual perfections until he reached uh, the ripening stage of these spiritual perfections and reborn as Prince Siddhartha when he renounced to the world and practice, and his practice is none other than the practice of Satipatthana, the way of mindfulness, which in itself is the noble part of a constituents, which in itself is uh, the three training, Sila Samari Penya. And he was able to ripen or reach the maturity of this inside knowledge and realize the four mega path and fruit of the noble ones and realize Nibbana. And with Arhata Mega, the holy path, he was able to eradicate all Kilisas and impurity, mental impurities which have been with him all along his lifetimes to the point of no return so that he became totally pure. And these uh, impurities are the is one of the impurities is uh, moha. This also was eradicated to the point of no return. Moha, in a sense, is avijja, ignorance, bewilderment, not knowing the truth, uh, confusion, or ignorance, not knowing the truth and knowing in the wrong way. This also was eradicated totally, uprooted totally. So that because he had no ignorance, Every time he reflected upon things which should be known, he was able to know them with his Sabinudanya and omniscient knowledge. Not only was he fulfilled with the Sabinudanya, omniscient knowledge, but also other kinds of knowledges. So in this way, he was able to possess Aradhanyana, beginning with Aradhanyana, Sabinudanyana, and all other knowledges. And this is known as Pala Samra, fulfillment of the result. In this way, after having fulfilled his uh, fulfillment of the result, he made plans to free the deserving beings from the existential suffering of old age, disease and death. He worked uh, 45 years of his ministry and out of 24 hours a day, leaving aside the time to rest for two hours or a little more, the rest of the time was devoted for the benefit of all beings so that they can be free from this existential suffering. This is known as Satipakara Samara, fulfillment of the benefit. So that he could put beings on the right path. When they have no faith, they were able to instill faith. When they have no basic conduct, sila, morality, they are able to sustain basic morality, sila, conduct, eight percepts, ten percepts, and so on. And also practice the Satipatthana way of mindfulness in order to develop the mind and insight and realize the stages of sanctity. And in this way, he helped the beings so that the beings become benefited because of his efforts. So such as fulfillment is known as Satipakara Samara, fulfillment of benefits. In the ordinary life, if you have not, not enough causes for fulfillment, then if you become a great person, an eminent person, you reach the eminent position without any fulfillment of the cause, then uh, such a person will be looked down as an opportunist. He is just an opportunist, he is just uh, taking his opportunity. Uh, he has not fulfilled the right causes, but he has, he has come to this state, eminent position. 
And moreover, if one has already fulfilled these uh, causes and effect and is not able to uh, assist or help others, then also he or she will be looked down as being selfish or criticized as being selfish. As for the Buddha, he is fulfilled with cause, cause and effect. And uh, for any a uh, person who uh, can uh, reason out, any person who can think, will respect such a person, or the Buddha will command respect and veneration, because he is fulfilled with cause and effect, and is able to help others. As so for the Buddha, he did not plan, or he did not um, materialize his plan, to help to free the beings from suffering after he has become Buddha. Even from the lifetime of the Buddha in the making, for instance, when he was uh, in the person of Sumedha, uh, during the time of Divyankara Buddha, although he would have reached the higher stage, the stage of holiness, and was uh, as a Savaka disciple of Divyankara Buddha, Although he had the chance, or he was able to realize holiness and see Nibbana in that, in that lifetime, he did not take this opportunity. Because as much as he knew himself to be not free from subject to the existential suffering of age, aging, sickness and death, so too he knew that other people also were subject to this suffering, universal suffering. So, people, he wanted to uh, awaken these beings to the true Dharma. If they don't know, if, if he knows, then he will let other people know. If he's awakened, he can awaken others. This is Bodo Bodhya. After knowing, by knowing himself, he can let other people know. Only when he knows by himself can he let other people know. And then after he can save himself from suffering, can he save others. That is also given by this Mokdor Mosiyam. Only when he is free, he can free others. That also is very important. If, uh, if he can swim ashore, cross over to the other shore by himself, he can also help other people to cross over to the other shore. So in this way, he laid out his plan to save all beings and towards that end, he started fulfilling his spiritual perfections, fulfilling his energies. Now when this expression, Mudra Mosiya, that is, uh, after freeing oneself, uh, he frees or he, she frees others. Now, here there are two parts. One is saving, and second one is liberation. Now, saving means saving others. So when these two things come at the same time, for ordinary people, they might think that uh, saving others, instead of looking towards one's own benefit. That means sacrificing oneself. Sacrificing one's own uh, advantages, one should save others without thinking about one's uh, uh, benefit, advantage. And they think that this is realistic. That means saving others, but not uh, at, the, at the cost of, at the risk of oneself. It is alright for ordinary purposes, but in this uh, great undertaking, showing the correct path to liberation from suffering. First of all, it is necessary to have this quality, to possess quality in order to save oneself. Then only you can save others. You can find out methods how to save others, how to liberate others. Actually, this is realistic. First of all, you must qualify yourself to save your, and save yourself. 
then find out ways and means to save others. Only this is realistic in this great undertaking of liberation from suffering. Therefore, it is necessary for some people, uh, ordinary people, would keep this saving others in the forefront and liberation afterwards. As for the Buddha, it is not so. Liberation first, self-liberation first and saving others second. This is actually more realistic. Let us say when two persons or let us say two friends uh, by some, some or other were sunk in the mire in the mud sunk in the mud to the neck let us say in a ditch and then one of them says that I will help you I will save you from this situation is it possible? No way so one must save oneself from this situation first only then one can save others by knowing how to struggle, how to pull oneself out of this mud, out of this difficult situation, and then teach another person, help his friend or friend, how to get out of it. And this is possible. This is realistic. So too, with the Buddha and the making, Bodhisattva, although he had sympathetic feeling towards others, compassionate feeling to help others. He himself also was mired in the, in the Kilisa mud as much as others. So Buddha was, as a, as a Bodhisattva, Buddha in the making, he was not able to struggle out of this Kilisa mud. So it was not possible to save others at the same time. Therefore, he strived and uh, performed the spiritual perfections to reach until he, uh, until he was able to reach the ripening stage of spiritual perfections, was able to struggle and pull himself out of this kilisa mud, first of all, and uh, reaching this uh, land of peace. As he said, Motor Mosiyam, after he has saved himself and struggled himself from this Kirisa mud, was he able to preach and give the methods how to save themselves from this Kilisa mud. He preached the sublime Dhamma. While as a Buddha and a making Bodhisattva, he had this compassionate feeling to save the suffering beings from the Kilisa mud. He had this motive to give the method of practice by himself by fulfilling the spiritual perfections. And after that, did he just live by himself? stayed away from the suffering being by himself, peacefully, and says no. After he has reached, uh, realized this Arada Mega, the holy path, the uh, highest path, fulfilling this Palasamara, the fulfilling the consequence, the effect. After he has fulfilled the cause and the effect, he was able to preach the Dharma, uh, until for, for, for uh, after this uh, seven to seven forty nine days, soon after his enlightenment under the, under the secret bow tree, for forty nine days, he made plans how to preach the Dharma, the liberating Dharma, to save the beings. Uh, he he made this plan and uh, he materialized this plan until the time uh, of his uh, great passing away. Mahaprinibana and the Satipatthana practice that we are doing now also is the instructions, guidance, and teachings given by the Buddha. If one finds it difficult in the beginning to accept this Buddha's knowledge and qualities, one can 
accept the result of the practice of the Tipatana when one realizes uh, the benefits of the practice in one's own right, uh, then uh, one uh, can be one is said to possess the sada, uh, as, as the expression goes, sada hoti, be fulfilled with the sada as the first limb of striving. As the Buddha has given, declared in the beginning of the great discourse on the way of mindfulness, as uh, the seven benefits such as the purification of the mind from such impurities like uh, raga, craving, or avai, craving, craving, attachment, overcoming sorrow, lamentation, overcoming physical pain, mental distress, and the realization of the path and fruit. These are the seven benefits as declared at the beginning of the Great Discourse on Mindfulness. And uh, to this end, he has given the sure path in the name of the Satipatthana, that is uh, sustaining mindfulness of every arising in your mind and body. And if you have that kind of confidence, this will be enough to possess the first limb of striving, Padani Yenga. If uh, one cannot have this kind of faith, then it is very difficult <coughs> to undertake the practice of Sati Patana, because only faith can motivate the practice. If one is able to uh, take it to heart, you know, this uh, result of the practice, then one will be able to undertake this practice respectfully and carefully. Then uh, one will be able to practice said Siddhas Mahdi Pinya, the three trainings, especially the cultivation of insight knowledge. Then one will be able to come to an acceptance through experiential knowledge. Then nobody can, nobody needs to come and say you have, you should have faith or not. You yourself will come to acceptance with your own personal experience. Yes, uh, though basically one may possess sadda in the beginning of the practice, for some reason or other, in the course of the practice, one can weaken uh, the faith and confidence, even become doubtful. Uh, in this connection, I uh, would like to cite his example. Uh, when he was a uh, young monk. Uh, while he was young, he studied these uh, literatures, uh, including the Sati Padana Sutta, and the teacher has uh, uh, given him these teachings about the Sati Padana Sutta, and the teacher also exhorted him to undertake this Sati Padana. So, and what, at one time, he came to the practice with much faith and confidence. However, in the course of the practice, about Vinaya, uh, training precepts of monks, he was not uh, satisfied. He became very doubtful. So he thought to himself that uh, without fulfilling sila, training precepts, can one practice? Is it possible to practice? Is it correct or not? He was he became doubtful, seeing the weak, uh, weakening, seeing the weak uh, training precepts in others. So, because of his uh, doubts rising in his mind in the course of the practice, he was not able to progress. And uh, as usual, he went to the meditation teacher to report his observations. And uh, the teacher noticed that he was not progressing. Instead, he was stagnating. So the teacher indirectly pointed out that uh, he might have some doubts in his practice. Either I must have doubt in the Dharma or the Buddha himself or the teacher himself. This will be very disruptive and uh, if so, if one has Vichikecha, skeptical doubt, this can cause much pain. So the teacher pointed out so he thought to himself, 
Well, I had come uh, with much faith and confidence in the practice, and also I had faith in the results of the practice as declared by the Buddha. But uh, in the course of the practice, because uh, I was uh, judging, I'm judging others, I'm not able to have faith, and uh, this is uh, hindering in my practice. So, this judgment of others happened to be his uh, hindrance. So, he thought about this uh, analogy. When one is traveling in a boat, you know, a riverine journey, and the, there was storm and waves were very high, and uh, you know, boats were, you know, uh, going up and down, and uh, there are other boats as well in the, in the river. And uh, instead of uh, minding his own business, uh, this person on the boat was uh, judging other people in others, other, other boats. That, oh, they might sink any time, that sort of thing. Instead of uh, minding his or her own boat and situation. So, he thought about that. So one should judge, one should be mindful of one's own business. So instead of from that time on, realizing this analogy, understanding this analogy, he thought to himself that, uh, oh, I should mind my own business, instead of judging others. So he was mindful of his uh, own uh, practice, and he was able to progress on the path. So at that time, the teacher was quite satisfied with his progress. So, if one has, one came with the faith and confidence in the practice, but due to some reasons or causes, there were, one that became doubtful, uncertain, then one can delay one's progress. So, a doubtful person is very difficult to be corrected. Even Buddha says that uh, I cannot help a doubtful person. So, sada is uh, first of the, uh, very important, as first of the limbs of striving, badani yanga. And though he is not demanding uh, you to uh, have faith and confidence, sada, but uh, you can reason yourself and be able to instill or develop faith and confidence in the practice. This uh, listening to the Dharma is in a way, is a way of awakening Sada. As it is said in the Vipassana action, that uh, if you want to awaken Sada, listen to the Dharma. By listening, discussion, and understanding the cause and effect, you come to acceptance and you can awaken this sada. This sada, the awakened the sada can be sustained with your practice. As I said, guard your mind all the time with vigilant mindfulness of every arising. Sustaining your mindfulness of every arising in the body. Then you will come to understand the result of the practice. You come to appreciate your practice and have faith in it. Only when you practice respectfully, carefully, meticulously, will the practice be effective. So, when you come to the practice, you can come to acceptance by yourself. Nobody needs to come and tell you or force you to believe it or not. Let us say, when you with the, the practice of Satipatthana, so long as uh, you are able to sustain your mindfulness, mental impurities have, have no chance of entering your stream of consciousness. Your mind will remain pure. Watching the abdomen and noting rising and falling, sustaining your mindfulness, so long as you are able to sustain it, there will be no impurities. If you are able to sustain it for one minute, at the rate of one second per moment of mindfulness, then 
you'll be able to purify your mind 60 moments in 5 minutes 300 and 1 hour 3600 moments or times of purity with times of uh, eradicating the impurities so this is the sure path then with the sure path you'll be able to come to acceptance with your own experiential knowledge when you are able to progress through the different levels of insight such as the discernment of mind and body the discernment of the conditionality of psychophysical phenomena and comprehending the universal characteristics of impermanence and so on you come to accept your accept that oh this is correct now i see things before i heard about them i wasn't sure about them now i'm sure about them this is my own experience and knowledge as much as you realize this knowledge you will come to acceptance and confirmation that this is correct and if you able to, if you are able to realize the genuine peace then you will come to definite conclusion that oh there is such a thing as genuine peace as a set if you want uh, in order to develop your sada you first of all to awaken sada you listen to the dharma talk if you want to develop it you break and take the practice and if you want to uh, stabilize strengthen sada also you continue with your practice until it becomes unshakable so that you don't need anybody to come and tell you to believe it or not during the retreat uh, sada gives uh, the mat talk every day in order to awaken your faith and confidence and uh, during the interview it so happened that uh, one of the yogis uh, when he came to the interview since uh, he said he was a baptist christian he was not able to bow down to the buddha Hmm. so it was said that uh, so long as he undertook the practice should be all right but uh, since uh, during the practice uh, the yogis have to come to interviews he said that he continued that uh, he was told by the previous teacher that uh, his observations and experiences are not to be revealed to other people not even to the teacher so it is quite regrettable that um, Sara cannot be awakened uh, even uh, with this uh, uh, you know discourses and after coming all the way uh, to this place uh, all he Sara wants to do is just exhort you to have faith this much is uh, enough for the first of the names of striving padani yanga let's go to the second one The second one says that one should be healthy free from sickness so this is necessary this is a very essential factor in order to undertake the practice with regard to one's body and life uh, as for this health if one is able to practice intensively uh, there have been there have been examples incidences where the sudden diseases are overcome and they can be cured of these diseases even if one is dying at the dying moment if one is able to sustain mindfulness practice then one can realize the teachings at that very moment and there have been cases of diseases which have not been cured in in a normal way can be cured there have been examples of such things in the course of the practice so this is uh, a very important element uh, to be fulfilled with by the practitioners so although one may feel sick and uh, disabled or one should be able to uh, take this practice and in the course of the practice one may be able to overcome it according to sharo if so long as a yogi is able to eat and sleep normally he or she is healthy nowadays there's no such a person as totally free from any kind of disease or dis- disability 
he or she has uh, is bound to have some sort of disability, sickness or ailment. And if one can uh, lead a normal life, that is, one can eat and sleep normally, then one is healthy enough to practice. According to the Buddha has shown in his uh, text, one is healthy if one has enough digestive power. In our tradition we call the Tejota to the heat of digestion. If one has the medium uh, kind of uh, digestive power, neither too much nor too little. And if one is uh, one has that uh, kind of uh, medium uh, type of digestive power, one is one can be said to be healthy. Now the yogis are said to be, let us say, fulfilled with out of these five limbs of striving. First of all, sadda, let us say, one has, uh, you have uh, sadda, faith and confidence, enough faith and confidence. And secondly, enough uh, health, fulfilled with uh, health, you're healthy enough. And as for the third one, let us see, asado hoti hamayawi. That means uh, one should not boast or brag about or pretend to possess quality which one does not really possess. Amaya we means not hiding, but uh, revealing correctly what one what happens to oneself. Not to hide and uh, just reveal correctly to the teachers and to the fellow yogis if necessary. If one hides one's mistakes or shortcomings, then the one will continue to make mistakes and suffer loss. So, if one reveals this to one's teacher, who has a compassionate feeling towards the yogis, and also to one's fellow yogis, if necessary, then they can give advice uh, to correct your ways, to mend your ways, so that you can mend your ways and be able to walk on the right path. So this much would be sufficient as regards this quality. The limb of uh, striving is, uh, this also can be observed by straightforward mind, uh, not uh, pretending what one does not possess, and not uh, hiding uh, one's shortcomings, such as without any sada, faith and confidence, to tell others that you have faith and confidence, or without sila, you pretend to have sila, and without actually practicing, you pretend to be practicing, you pretend, uh, or you say that you are practicing, and uh, the reporting, the conceptual knowledge has your experience of one. That is also important in the interviews. So you abstain from all these things, from hiding the shortcomings, and uh, say things correctly as they happen. Then only the teachers will be able to give necessary guidance. So, for instance, uh, you are practicing full time, the Satipatthana, and instead of practicing full time, pretend to be practicing full time. And not uh, without knowing, discerning mind and body, pretending to discern mind and body. Without comprehending the conditionality, pretending to comprehend conditionality. Without seeing the universal characteristics of impermanence and so on, pretending to see them. Without realizing jhana megapala, pretending to realize jhana megapala. So this is uh, being hypocritical. And uh, one should be free from uh, this uh, same things which one does not possess in order to cause, in order to be esteemed by others. So when you are reporting, you can report like this, out of 24 hours, I sit so many hours and I walk so many hours. And uh, I note rising and falling or I cannot note rising and falling. This is the practice, the work, whether you do the work or not, and the quality. As regards quality, are you able to stay with the objects uh, precisely or not? This is regards. This is reporting about quality. 
then uh, if you are able to note what do you observe for noting and observing what you, if you know something or do you what, if you note an object what are the nature of the objects what are the natures or what is the nature of the object you observe in this way you can report if you cannot observe in this way you can report if you cannot observe in this way you can report if you cannot observe 